when you catch a wave, you're basically paddling as fast as you can to catch the, the speed of the wave. And by going up on the, on the steeper part of the wave, you're actually able to paddle slower than the speed of the wave to catch it. As the wave gets bigger and bigger, the scale gets bigger and bigger. But so does the speed requirement to catch that wave. So what has happened recently is as guys are continually pushing the limits in big wave surfing, uh, they want to catch bigger and bigger surf. The only way they can really successfully do that is by uh, motor-assisted watercraft. So what's happening now is guys are using the, the jet skis to uh, get enough speed so that they can sling themselves into uh, waves that they probably otherwise couldn't paddle into. Basically, uh, the way the tow, tow in scenario works is you have a partner that's a driver, and in most cases you alternate being a driver and a rider, but basically the, the driver has to have a really good understanding of the waves and the dynamics behind towing in so that he can position you on the right wave at the right time. And it, it's, it's almost a, a new sport in, you ha in that you have to kind of know and understand what the swell is doing. Not only how the wave comes in and, and forms up against the reef, but actually an open ocean swell. Because that's when you're reading the surf and reading if a, if a good wave is coming in. Uh, the towing is a little bit more tricky because you have only one hand free. You have to keep one hand on the, on the nose of the board and the other one you kind of, you know, just hold, uh, hold the rope. And you also have to keep a constant tension on the, on the rope. Otherwise, you know, you can get uh, some pretty, pretty strong jarring action going. But other than that, um, when you're catching the wave, really what you want to do is you want to sling yourself into it. And if the driver is aware of where you are and, and what your capability is, he can position you so that you have some, some control over when you, uh, when you slingshot in and release. But basically, it's a, it's a turning action to gain some speed and, and direction. And then uh, once you feel like you're under the power of the wave or you have the speed to glide over the section, you let go of the rope and, and you're off. My driver, Brock Little, uh, understands this break pretty well because he grew up surfing right across the, uh, the channel. So he understands this wave really well, and as a result, he can put me right in the sweet spot on the wave. Avalanche is kind of a fickle wave because it, it really breaks good on only certain kinds of uh, swell directions and, and wind directions. So it's, it's, uh, it's a little fickle. It's also pretty dangerous because water kind of converges all at once on the shelf from a pretty deep channel, and you can get held under for a long time if you don't make it. So it's a, it's, even though it's not the biggest wave, it's still a wave of, of some pretty good consequences if you, if you don't make it. comes in from a deep channel and converges all at once. But what I like about this wave is it's both a left and a right. So you can kind of get some fun rides going both directions until it gets really big and then it's just a big left. When it's all said and done, luck also plays a factor because you can't control mother nature. So when all of it comes together, it's almost like a miracle is happening. And those are the sessions that, that are most memorable and those are the sessions that stick in surfers' minds. This is a, it's a big elution swell that is producing uh, 20 to 30 foot waves. And um, they're coming in with really good shape. There's a couple that swing a little uh, wide and, and break prematurely, but for the most part, this is a really good day. And I, I just feel kind of lucky that it's all kind of come together uh, just so I can experience this. After waiting a couple waves for, for some of the other riders to go, my driver picks off a big one. I guess he feels that I'm, I'm 
uh, confident enough and, I, and I, I'm familiar enough with the wave. As, a, as the driver flings me towards the wave, I can tell that, that I'm under the power of the wave. I let go of the rope, and I see it's going to be a pretty good one, so I start to slowly fade back and try to reposition myself to get a little deeper. Um, just as I start to drop down the steep section, I begin to hit some chop. Now, the first chop was OK. Um, as I'm hitting the second chop, it's, it's starting to really concern me because I think if I hit another one, I might not be able to hold on to my board, and if I eat it there, the consequences could just be disastrous. So I'm holding on like crazy, and as soon as I land back on the wave face, the wave begins to stretch out and smooth out a little bit, and I'm able to actually get my rail in the water and begin to turn. But I really don't have any other choice but to turn into the ball, because if I straighten out, I'm just going to get annihilated by the lip. So I pull in. While I'm pulling in, I'm just hoping that the thing forms up properly, and it looks pretty good. The second thing I'm, I'm thinking about is if I just hold on tight enough, I might be able to come out of it, because I'm watching the wave, and as it's forming up, I can see a section on the end kind of beginning to pinch a little bit. So I hold on tight, and I aim high into the pocket so I can try to come out. But all the experience and all the knowledge that I've ever used to surf kind of is applied into this little microcosm of a surf session, this little this big wave. And it's neat for me to experience something that's so fresh and so new. It's a whole other dimension, even after all the surfing experience that I've had. This is either the biggest wave or one of the biggest waves that I've ever caught. It is definitely the biggest tube ride that I've ever ridden. Um, the first thing that runs through my head is I'm, I'm concerned as I'm, I'm beginning to bounce. But then the fear is washed away with complete concentration and, and survival mode takes over. I'm just solely thinking on, focusing on surviving and making this wave. The wave itself is so critical, and I'm so absorbed in the moment that 